find a 95% prediction interval. Now, it doesn't have to be 95%, and I'll explain this, of course, in a couple of minutes. Interval uh, for y when x equals some number called x sub p. That sounds complicated, but let me give you a concrete example. And we don't need this anymore. Let's take our example that we used throughout the whole chapter, where the x and the y happen to be advertising and sales. And the numbers were 1 and 2, 3 and 4, what, 2 and 5, 4 and 6. What was the next pair of numbers? 4 and 6, 2 and 5. Were these the pairs of numbers in that order? Hello, anybody, anybody out there? Okay, thank you. And let's go through the whole chapter quickly again. We, we graph them. Uh, one, two, this is zero, of course. Three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, nine. And one of the x, two, and the y is here. 3 on the x, 4 on the y is here, 4 on the x, 6 on the y is here, 2 on the x, 5 on the y is here. We graphed a straight line between them. We got y hat equals b0 plus b1x was y hat equals 1.5 plus 1.1x. We got the syx was equal to how close the dots are to the straight line. In this particular case came out to 1.16. We did the T formula, are the X and Y related? And we did the T calculation, which came out to 2.12, I believe. We went to the T diagram, and it came out to the boundaries using an alpha 5%, which we have to chop in half in this case, came out to uh, 4.30 or something. This is, of course, a brief review of the whole chapter. Do not reject a zero, which means the x and y are not related. x and y not related. And I think the number we used was, with, with, remember, 4 minus 2, or 2 degrees of freedom was 4.302, or 4.03, what was the number? Four, four. Four point three. what was it? Yeah, 4.30 something. Oh, some. Let's put it down the exact number already. 4.3027. Thank you, Gina. A minus 4. Point. <coughs> and since the number here was in the except region, that means do not reject a zero. Or X and Y or advertising and sales are not related. Now, if they're not related, what would you do? You would stop right there. You would, if, if they're not related, the entire chapter makes no sense. But make believe, you want, I'm, I'm going to use these numbers anyway to, to, make, to calculate the prediction interval, but the, ra the reality is you would, once you realize they're not related, everything else at this point doesn't make any sense. So just be aware of that. Yes, Alex? No. Yes, you go to the T table with the point the 0 0.025 because we chopped the alpha in half. Remember, 2.5% here and 2.5% here. We went down to 4 minus 2 or 2 degrees of freedom. Remember, N minus 2. Okay, so now comes the, so what's the prediction interval? So, I'm, so let's say if, when x equals 7. What I'm saying is, let's say, for example, somebody would like to extrapolate or extend or predict or forecast what's going to happen to the sales when x equals 7. Now, again, if you know for a fact that, that um, they're not related, you wouldn't want to do this. But let's say, for argument's sake, it turns out they are related, and you want to use this to make a forecast, because next month you're planning to put in $7,000 worth of advertising, and you'd like to know what kind of sales you can expect, so you can hire the proper number of workers, you can hire the proper amount of raw material, et cetera. So of course, the way you calculate this is by plugging this into the formula, as we did at the very beginning of the chapter. You plug in a 7, because that's the number we're trying to make a forecast for specifically, which is why it's called a prediction interval. And if you do plug in 7, 7 times 1.1 is 7.7, plus 1.5 is 9.2. So when x equals 7, we expect the y value to be at 9.2, something like that. Well, that's how we did it at the beginning of the chapter. But now that we learned the entire chapter, what can we do beyond that? 
Yes. Now, we already figured out the correlation. I'm sorry, I should have put it down. We also figured the correlation was equal to 0.81. The R squared was equal to 0.83. So this was 83. 83 times 83 was what? 67, 69%? 69%. That's already done. This is something different. What can you do? Yes. Very, very good. You can say, you even to you, we think that the y value is going to be exactly 9.2, but that's not realistic. The fact of the matter is the other dots are off the line, so probably our prediction will also be off by a little bit. How much? Probably similar to the other lines. So instead of coming up with a single number, what we really want to give is a prediction interval. You want to say, I believe the answer is somewhere between 6 and 10, or something like that. You don't want to say it's exactly 9.2. That's an excellent guy. I'm going to stop giving out these papers for a while, but pass it to Virgilio. Thank you. So the question is, how do you calculate the interval? So well, that's what we're going to do. We're going to develop a formula for it right now, and then show you how to use the formula. The formula has about six or seven pieces in it. Can somebody please tell me, can they get harder and harder as we get along, so if you want to get some credit, just give me the easy ones first. What's the most important part of this whole formula? You're going to see a whole long formula now for calculating a 95% prediction, prediction interval, or a 90% or an 80% or a 99%. What's the formula going to look like? And again, if you looked in the book, uh, please be honest and don't give me the answer. This is really supposed to be done from scratch. Yes? It's going to have an SYX in it because if the SYX was big, it means all the previous dots were far from the, from, the, from the straight line, so probably this will also be far from the straight line, or a better, good chance of it happening, in which case, so the SYX got to be in the formula, so that's correct, but it's not the easiest part of it, so I owe you one for that. Yes, Paul? There's going to be, like, like that's always a good, an easy answer, there's going to be an N in the formula, and the N's going to be on the bottom because the bigger the sample size, the tighter the interval, so the N got to be you know, on the bottom of something. Yes? The alpha, the alpha is going to be in the formula because you want to change it from 95 to 99 to 90 to 80. And, you know, so you got to have. The, how do we do that in other chapters? We ch we didn't just put the 95 directly in the formula. We change it into a z or a t. In this case, it's going to be a t. So there's going to be a t there. And the bigger the percentage is going to be what? The bigger the interval or the smaller the interval? The bigger the percentage, like 99, is going to be a bigger interval or a smaller? If it Somebody raise their hand because all those answers didn't sound right. Yes. No, if you, have a, if you want to be 99% confident, then you've got to give yourself a really big interval. If you want to be 80% confident, you give yourself a small. So the bigger the percentage, so it's going to be in the top of the formula, the bigger the percentage, the bigger the T. What's next? So we, what's next? What? The R could be there, but the R is going to be there. Uh, you'll see the R is there indirectly in a few minutes. So the R is not, is not directly in the formula, but the R concept should be there. So you're not wrong, but you're not right either. So what's next? Yes. So that's correct. You've got to have the 7 got to be put into the formula because you want to make a specific forecast for the 7. And in fact, the 7 is so important it's there twice in the formula. And what, what are we, what's the symbol for the 7? The XP. So there's going to be an XP in the formula. OK. We're missing, you guys still haven't told me the easiest one or the most important one. Anybody who hasn't raised their hand yet? Everybody, yes, Nick. The Y hat. In other words, you're making a forecast, you're claiming the, at the answer, we're going to start out with 9.2. We're going to make that number a little bit bigger, and we're going to make that number a little bit smaller, like we did for all the other confidence intervals. So the Y hat starts out the whole formula, but it's going to be plus something and minus something, and that plus or minus depends upon the degree of confidence, or pr precision in this case how close the dots are to the straight line. Now, I can't expect you to realize there's got to be a square root here. And I can't expect you to, f uh, to expect there's got to be a 1 here and 1 over n. And I, this, by the way, has a, a logical interpretation, which we'll talk about if we have time today. The 1 over n we talked about already, plus the xp. Now, the xp is here in the formula, but it's also already here. In order to calculate the y hat, you have to plug in the x. This is really xp. This is the xp. And Anam, Anam's, Anam, Anam's, Anam's uh, answer about the, the correlation. Remember I told you the correlation and the B1 are very, very similar. Practically identical formulas with identical interpretations. Not identical, but very similar. So we already have the R by using the B1 in the formula. We, you, that's already included. But we're missing about two or three things. The next one is difficult, but doable. And the last one is almost impossible, but also logical. We have, one, we have two more things to put into, the, three more things, really, to put into the formula. Uh, 